Back again, phase four, chest and triceps, dumbbell only. Oh yeah, looking forward to this one. Love a good chest and tricep pump. And of course, the program is 25% off, so if you wanna grab your copy to follow along, link in description. Let's do this. Yeah. That's a good one, get a little bird in there. Add some twist to the classic bench press here. Um, and as you can see, pretty much the same kind of motion and form as a standard bench press, dumbbell press. Uh, you know, you wanna make sure your shoulders are down, they're depressed and also retracted to really stabilize the shoulder joint. Once you're in the position here, you're pressing but also rotating, kind of supinating that grip, getting that nice extra squeeze and extra motion there for the pectoralis major. And you know, it depends on how comfortable you are with that positioning and twist. You know, you can go a smaller twist or you can go with even a higher amount of uh, rotation in there where you bring your palms all the way back or supinated and get a little extra squeeze in the chest there. But you always kind of, I always imagine the chest is these two kind of like, you know, balloons or pill pillows and your arms are squeezing them together and really feeling the activation where you're like uh, trying to pop them almost in a way and it really gives you that nice extra contraction in there. You know, it's always that kind of mental visualization of what you're doing and to me that works pretty well. And, uh, gets pretty pumped. What? And this is one of those exercises where the weight we're using, which is 60 pound dumbbells, doesn't really feel too intense during that first set. But by the time you get to the second one, and as Brandon was mentioning, when you really use that mind muscle connection, you supinate at the top and you really squeeze the pecs, that can wear you out really damn fast. I'm already feeling it and I'm kind of happy we didn't go into up in weight because we were kind of debating whether we should or not. This feels great. It's going to be four sets, 12 reps, and you're really going to feel it in the pecs. I know I definitely am. These balloons are going to pop. There's gonna be buff milk everywhere. <laughs> Close grip, incline, dumbbell press, and changing the angle of the press. Obviously, you're putting a little bit more uh, focus on the clavicular portion of the chest. So the portion that actually attaches here at the clavicle, um, just the fibers up here, upper chest. So kind of pressing upwards, but also slightly inwards too, especially at the beginning position where, you know, when you're at the full extension here, you're pretty much more at a vertical position in your upper and lower arm, but as you flex in your elbow joint, bring it down, your elbows will kind of come to your side here, and that's when you kind of push those dumbbells, dumbbells inward, get a little extra contraction in the chest, that helps a lot, and then of course, you're going through the motion of the pressing and inward, so it's almost kind of like, kind of isometric hold with the inward press and then the concentric and eccentric contraction of the press. So there's a lot kind of going on in there, and you definitely feel it very quickly after those 12 repetitions. At this point, your chest is already beginning to wonder, what the hell did I ever do to you? Because you're putting quite a bit of strain on it, and oh, that pump is, it's accumulating. It's like a multiplier. With every exercise, it gets just a little bit bigger, and as Brandon was saying, it's making those little modifications, like keeping the elbows tight as you reach the top position, but as you bring it back down, you spread those elbows apart just a little bit, you pinch the dumbbells together as hard as you can, you really feel that contraction in the, your chest, and of course, like in the last exercise, you use that mind-muscle connection, so you're always focusing on what you're working, and it's crazy how much that little tiny addition can really help the overall exercise. <sighs> It's like the end of the workout, you're gonna have quad damage. Like in Quake, your quads won't actually be damaged, but yeah, like sure. the game Quake, you'll have quad damage. Yeah. So you'll, you'll uh, remember when you could give somebody <laughs> that you're gibbing your muscles during this exactly. workout. Exactly. Your nipples will be like quad damage nipples. <laughs> it'll touch someone, it'll just blow up. Yeah. Third exercise, we're on to the single arm floor press. Of course, we're utilizing dumbbells. Uh, well, now with the single arm, um, it being a unilateral exercise, focusing on one side, then moving on to the next. This is changing things up quite a bit as far as stability, balance, and control. Once you're laying on the floor, um, you're pretty unstable when you bring that one dumbbell up and then back down. What it's gonna be doing is forcing your opposite side to contract to pull you 
back to center line because if you kind of basically just were relaxed and you bring that dumbbell down, as you're bringing it down, the body wants to twist. So what you have to do is really engage your core and make sure you control the motion down with that downward motion and upward motion, the concentric and eccentric contraction of the movement there to make sure um, that you're gonna be stable throughout the motion. So having a lot of control in there is gonna create um, a lot more difficulty in the movement because you're slowing down the tempo of the exercise. But of course, you also have to really engage a lot of uh, stabilizing muscles to make sure you're staying kind of in that straight supported uh, form there. So what you're gonna be doing is when you lay on the ground, you're gonna have your legs straight out. So instead of doing this or widening your legs, you're actually gonna have them together and even crossing them to make sure you won't, you know, kind of cheat in a way. And uh, it's kind of easy. Use your elbow as like a lever and just kind of pivot it back with your other arm. And this is basically the starting motion here. Now you can kind of hold your hand out to the side here uh, to kind of stabilize yourself a little bit. It's not really gonna help a lot. So what you wanna do is go ahead and keep the shoulder back and then press upward nice and slow, lower it down. If you're relaxed, you're gonna to wanna to come this way. So you really have to engage your core to make sure it stabilizes you and it is not easy. Oh yeah. Now on to the next side. Oh yeah. Dang. That is a good one. If you haven't tried these before, definitely give them a shot. Start a little bit lighter, feel what it takes to help stabilize yourself and balance the movement, and then go up and wait from there. But wow, definitely a favorite. Underhand dumbbell flies. Now the fly, of course, utilizing one joint, uh, making it more of an isolation movement, really trying to isolate the chest in that way. And if you look at the chest, it's kind of a big muscle that's fanned out. And you know, you get all the kind of connection through the sternum, the clavicle a little bit in the abdominal portion here. But what's happening is the fan all comes up into the humerus here and that's gonna be moving that arm um, inward basically, kind of pulling it inward. That's what we're gonna be doing with this exercise with the fly, underhand fly, kind of starting in that stretch position. So the chest is gonna be coming into the humerus and then we're gonna be pulling that weight up to the top position. You can tell as you do that, your chest is shortening. Get that nice big squeeze that top position and then lay it, letting it down to the bottom position here. So, you know, we're gonna go somewhat light. It being in isolation, we wanna make sure we get the movement right and strict. And uh, here we go. Oh yeah. Oh, those are tough. Especially when you kind of try to hold it in that position. Squeeze. Boom. Get that nice chest pump. Hell yeah. Skull crushers. I'd say we probably would give credit uh, to Skull Crushers for developing most of our tricep size and strength. It is an awesome isolation exercise that will really help target the long head of the tricep. And of course, long head holding a bit more of the mass and strength if you kind of pay a little bit of focus and attention to that muscle group, then that can actually carry over into other lifts, especially obviously pressing lifts, which can be helping out like shoulder press, bench press. If you have very strong triceps, um, well, those lifts will increase as well. You just obviously don't want to over or under develop it, um, but either way, the skull crushers are above dude's favorite, yeah. Last tricep exercise, and it's gonna be the kickbacks. Now, kickbacks are essentially uh, just a, it's almost like a tricep extension if you do it on the cables. You see in this position where you're coming to here, to here in the flex position to an extension. Um, but of course, with the dumbbell, gravity's just gonna wanna pull the weight down so you don't really have to work against the resistance. So what we're gonna be doing is changing the angle so that way your tricep has to work against the resistance. And in this case, we're going to be bending over and you can just use your leg, but in this case we have a bench, so we're gonna be using the bench. And you're gonna be at this angle, the flex position, and then you're going to be extending up. So now your uh, tricep is gonna have to work against gravity and the dumbbell resistance to lift that weight up into that fully extended position. Oh yeah, and you definitely feel those triceps work to extend that arm. Ooh. Oh yeah, hey, 
that burns. And as you can see, we're doing a unilateral motion. You can do bilateral, so what you'd be doing is just bending over and doing both arms at the same time. But sometimes it's hard to really get connected to the muscle and the movement if you're doing a bilateral like that. So doing a unilateral sometimes kind of help you really put a little bit more focus on what you're doing in that tricep. <sighs> Oh yeah. And what you don't want to do, of course, is use momentum. So if you're in this position, you kind of swing it up and you bring it down and you're flexing and extending in your shoulder joint. What you want to do is keep that shoulder joint stable and just extend and flex in the elbow. And that'll make sure it's all triceps, baby. Hell yeah. Rollouts, this is the last exercise. I'm gonna do some core with the rollouts. Um, I don't know, not a lot to say in these. I mean, it's probably one of our favorite ab exercises. As you can see, we're using a little roller wheel here. I remember as a kid, I used to find these, like you'd see me at yard sales. I think actually our parents had one and I thought it was like some kind of like circus toy where you'd stand on it. It's like a tricycle or something. Not a tricycle, but what it was called, unicycles. And uh, I tried to like stand on it and I ended up breaking my wrist. No, I'm kidding, I didn't break my wrist. But I didn't realize it was an awesome tool to build your abs, bro. So that's what we're gonna be doing today, some rollouts. So, you're going to be flexing the hip, extending in the hip, and also in the arms, reading that kind of plank position, and then pull yourself up to the top position. So there's kind of a lot going on in this exercise as far as the muscles involved, but as far as the motion, it's not too difficult. You're just kind of pushing out, and then pulling back in. Oh, damn. 25 reps, whew, that'll get your abs burning like crazy. Oh, summer's coming, gotta get these suckers popping. That wraps up the chest and triceps dumbbell workout. We only have one more dumbbell workout to go. Damn, feels like it went fast, but I think we're ready. Me too. So see you next time. We're going to be hitting shoulders and traps, and then we're going to be moving on to our superhero program. Ooh, yeah. Let's do it. Stay buff.